Morning to you and thanks for joining us on this Wednesday, August 9th. I'm Alicia Lewis. We have plenty of news headlines to get you caught up on this morning. But first, let's say good morning to meteorologist Guy Brown. How's it going? Yeah, I got the same suit on, so it's going pretty good from yesterday. <laughs> but Alicia, I got to say, you rocking that pink, okay? Thank you, Guy. So I'll, I'll Happy give that Wednesday. to you. Happy Wednesday. On Wednesdays, we wear pink, I thought. <laughs> there it is. I forgot my pink, but oh well. All right, 69 right now. Dew points a little higher than what they were yesterday. So maybe you can feel a little bit of the muggy, muggy, mugginess out there. Can I talk? Uh, here's your hourly forecast for the morning hours. Really not tracking much for the first half of the day. Now, again, if you were with us yesterday morning, I was talking about the chance for some afternoon showers and storms. Looks like that front will bring us that chance for some storms, and it could reach here um, uh, central Minnesota, southern Minnesota. You still have air quality alerts ahead for northern Minnesota. That's still in effect. Uh, that will still lift today at noon. That the showers that, you know, uh, uh, popped off yesterday in northern Minnesota, that should help improve air quality uh, throughout the day. So more on your forecasts uh, coming up throughout the morning hours. All right, we'll check back in a bit. Thank you, Guy. Well, less than five hours sentencing is expected to begin in the sex trafficking trial of Anton Lazaro. The former GOP strategist was found guilty on all counts, including five counts of sex trafficking of a minor. He also paid an 18 year old to recruit younger teens to have sex with him for money. Back in April, when he was handed a guilty verdict, prosecutors called Lazaro the Jeffrey Epstein of Minnesota, saying he's going to go to prison for a long time. Today's sentencing begins at 9 a.m. Meanwhile, the second shooter in the St. Paul Truck Park bar shooting from 2021 received a 37 year prison sentence. Terry Brown was convicted of murder after one of the bullets he fired killed 27 year old Markeisha Wiley. Brown and another man, Devondre Phillips, started shooting at each other in the middle of a crowded bar, wounding another 15 people. Wiley's family gave emotional statements in court. And show not only him, but citizens of St. Paul that you cannot solve issues. With a shootout in a crowded bar, there will be consequences. Phillips is serving 29 years in prison for attempted murder for his role in the shootout. This morning, a 14 year old St. Paul boy accused of shooting and killing his 12 year old brother is back home. He was released from custody just hours ago. The Ramsey County Attorney's Office says there isn't enough evidence to file charges. The family had been asking for the teen's release since the tragedy happened on Saturday. They called this an accident, adding that someone brought a gun into their home. The family wants that person to step forward and take responsibility. What about four hours? Day three of a hearing for the teen accused of killing a Wisconsin girl will begin. Ten year old Lily Peters went missing in Chippewa Falls last April. Her body was found in the woods close to her home. Right now, the 15 year old suspect is charged as an adult facing first degree intentional homicide and two counts of sexual assault. The hearings come after the teen's attorney called for the case to be moved to juvenile court. A decision is expected by Monday. Well, this morning, renovate 1558. The group trying to save the Hamlin Midway Library is suing the city of St. Paul. The city closed the building at the end of May and started prepping it for demolition. Proponents of the new construction say the one story layout better suits the community's needs. But the advocacy group is arguing that the de demolition is violating the Minnesota Environmental Rights and Policies Act. And because it was added to the National Register of Historic Places in January, it should be protected. The well, Minneapolis Public School District is holding off an unconventional cell phone policy inside its schools. The plan would put an emphasis on student voices, letting them have input on cell phones in school, then require teachers to formulate their own cell phone rules and enforcement. MPS leaders say they're going to take more time for community input before trying to vote again. Well, speaking of school, less than a month, school starts back up for kids in Minnesota. And this week, one group is putting in the work to prevent students from going hungry. It was a really great turnout last night for Hunger Solutions annual cheers and beers at Surly in Minneapolis. Hunger Solutions feeds people in need across the states, and they're celebrating a little more after Minnesota lawmakers pass a universal school meals bill, which will provide breakfast and lunch to Minnesota grade school students throughout the year. It took a long time to really position it in the right way so that people could accept it. It's not, you know, it's not cheap. It, it was a real investment on the part of everyone in the state of Minnesota for children in the state of Minnesota, and it's going to make a remarkable difference. Hunger Solutions also hopes the new food bill gets rid of any confusion about who owes what and why when it comes to their school lunch. 
If you're a lake lover, the U of M would love to hear from you. They're looking for volunteers to help them spot an invasive algae known as starry stonewort. The algae was first found in 2015 and has since spread to 16 Minnesota lakes. Those detections are all thanks to volunteers. So you have until Friday to register at starrytrek.org. I see what they did there. The trek is Saturday, August 19th. Starrytrek.org. There you go. MSP International Airport is a step closer to its pre-pandemic flight capacity. According to Thrifty Traveler, nonstop flights to Dublin, Ireland will start up again early next year. It's the last international flight returning to Minneapolis after COVID. And our Danny Speedwalk shows what it means for the airport still bouncing back from the pandemic. After a slow bounce back, airports are thriving again. It's just been weird to transition from everybody being scared, wearing masks, and then we're to kind of none of that again. Mackenzie Noakes is flying from MSP to Amsterdam on her way to Poland. It feels kind of normal. <laughs> After COVID shut down international travel in March 2020, MSP to Amsterdam was the first overseas route to return to Minneapolis that fall. Your flight time today is a very short seven hours and 14 minutes. Gradually, other important routes came back too, like London in 2022 and Tokyo this March. Currently, MSP offers flights to more than a dozen international locations. Of the nonstop international routes that got cut during the pandemic, all but one have returned to MSP except for MSP to Dublin. But even that could be changing soon. This is kind of the final piece of the puzzle. On Tuesday, Kyle Potter of the Minnesota-based travel website, Thrifty Traveler, reported that Aer Lingus is preparing to relaunch MSP to Dublin. The news isn't public yet, but Potter says the airline's filings suggest the route will return in May 2024. In terms of the marquee long haul routes to Europe, to Asia, this is it. Uh, this is everything. So that that is a big watershed moment for, for the airport, um, for travelers here based out of MSP. It's just one more option for someone like Mackenzie Noakes. Things have picked up again. After three and a half long years since COVID. I think it's exciting. Um, it, it marks an end maybe of that chapter a little bit. Danny Spiewak, CARE 11 News. Well, new this morning, there's finally a winner for the Mega Millions largest ever jackpot. Just hours ago, the lottery announced the winning ticket for the $1.58 billion prize. It wasn't sold here, unfortunately, in Minnesota. It was in Florida. We don't know many details about the winner yet, but whoever won could also choose to take the cash option, which is about 783 million bucks before taxes. The next jackpot is now back at $20 million, and the drawing for that will be Friday at 10 p.m. We're just 15 days away from the Minnesota State Fair, and this year Metro Transit's offering a new way for you to get to the fair faster. Metro Transit's going to bring back its State Fair Express service, but has now added a fourth location in Blaine. The other park and ride lots are in Minnetonka, Bloomington, and Cottage Grove. Buses will run to and from the fair every 30 minutes from 9 a.m. on weekdays and 8 a.m. on the weekends through 11 p.m. You can buy a round trip ticket for five bucks in advance or six bucks the day of. It's a steal of a deal. I highly recommend taking public transit. Right now you can help stuff the bus at the Mall of America. The goal is to collect as many school supplies as possible to help students across the state through the Kids in Need Foundation. You can donate supplies at the North Garden on level one anytime during mall hours through Saturday, August 19th. Items needed the most include notebooks, folders, pencil pouches, backpacks, socks, crayons, markers, and glue sticks. Well, there's a new and improved website to help parents save for their child's college education. The Minnesota 529 College Savings Plan updated its site. It has reorganized its content and expanded resources to help families reach their education saving goals. If you have an account or your login rather will remain the same. This morning, America's top hidden live music scenes are out. And get this, Stillwater ranks 36. That's according to a poll from ticket broker Cheapo ticketing. Those surveyed cited Ziggy's on Main, Petey Pappy's and the Velveteen Speakeasy as notable venues for local and touring artists. Some cities in the top 10 include Modesto, California, Branson, Missouri and Marfa, Texas. 439 is your time and still ahead here on Sunrise. A public health alert for some products at Aldi. We're going to tell you what you may need to throw out here in just two minutes. 